so th this is the next stage for our, our first painting. Uh, you can see a little bit of what we're going to be working on. Uh, you can see the, the still life. It is, uh, it is a still life of uh, boxes and a pyramid. And it's the easiest uh, form to paint, you know, cubes with flat planes. Uh, and you can see that I've, I've got here my, my canvas that has been stained with the Imprimatura. I line it up a little bit from the, from the demonstration on how to stain it because uh, at the angle that it was, I couldn't really judge it correctly until I, I put it up here. So I've made it a little bit lighter. So this is what, it, what you want it to look like. Uh, again, you don't, you don't want it to look opaque. Let me show you what I mean again, because this is a common mistake. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to look like that. You don't want it to be that thick. You want it to look like this. It's it's a very, a very transparent stain. Uh, so we're gonna get to work on this, working on the, on the painting. Uh, and so what you need, what I recommend is, of course, you need a rag. You need a cloth rag. It can, you can do this with paper towels, but it doesn't really work as well. You need a, an old t-shirt that you can cut up and have a, a, a rag. Also, don't use any microfiber uh, cloths that are meant for like cleaning furniture, or cleaning cars. Uh, you need some, this is cotton, like an old cotton t-shirt. This works, this works really well. And so you need your, your rag. You're gonna be using that as much as the brush. You need some stiff brushes uh, like these here. These are bristle brushes. And I'm, I'm gonna get in there with, to do some careful wiping. So I need some small, I need a small one and I need uh, this one as well. Um, and then you also need a soft hair brush like this so that you can draw. Uh, and over here I have my palette. I have my palette here. I have my palette with the, with the romber that was thinned down and I've got some more romber because I, I am gonna use more paint, you know, to draw and add darker values. Uh, and So I'm gonna I'm gonna start working on this. So you need your brushes, your cloth, and of course uh, you need paint thinner because to wipe out the paint from here, you need to be dipping your brushes and your rag into that into the paint thinner. Uh, now look carefully how I approach this. Let me wipe this glob away. Uh, there's some common mistakes that I've noticed people make. Uh, with with this uh, process, uh, I'm just gonna blend that in there again. So you want to get a little bit of paint thinner, and uh, so that I can sketch the the still life in front of me. I always like to do this. You can see kind of to help me figure out the composition for my painting. See, it's kind of like working on tone paper, you know, in a sense. You know, I want to find the center of my composition so I can put something there or so that I can uh, ignore it or try to avoid the center. All right, and then I also like to do these diagonals uh, do this just to help me balance out the composition. So that's the center. So maybe maybe I want to put something there. Maybe I don't, but I know where it is. And see this, it helps in breaking up uh, the space. You know, in balancing out. Uh, now, this I can, you know, blur it out a little bit. Blur this out with my fan brush. 
can blur it out. And now I'm, I'm gonna sketch out the scene in front of me. Uh, again, it's it's uh, objects with flat planes. And I'm going to uh, establish how big I want this to get. I don't want anything to go bigger than that. I don't want anybody to go uh, lower than this here. And I don't want anything to go past here. I'm setting, you know, setting my margins, my boundaries. Now, you will see that with this technique, working into the into the thin layer of imprimatura, it allows you to very quickly establish uh, your painting and your composition uh, because you can easily wipe out the the paint. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna start to sketch out my composition, and I think I want to avoid the the you know the the center. I have this gray box here, and the white box that is shorter comes almost halfway, maybe slightly less. Uh, so I'm going to do this. Sometimes this becomes challenging, uh, even though it's a very simple, very simple objects, uh, becomes challenging because getting the right uh, tilt to the planes of the box, you know, like this and then this here. You know, like, getting this, you know, that angle, uh, and getting this, getting this right, getting this right. And one way, one way to do this is, uh, one way to get those angles correctly, let me, I mean, I'm trying to do this as, as quickly as I can. Uh, and once I start to wipe out the the paint, you'll see how quickly it looks like a like a little painting with a. It, it helps you establish all the major areas in the painting. You know, like the background, middle ground, and foreground, very quickly. Maybe this plane is thicker here. So I'm, you know, s sketching it in. Uh, and then there's the pyramid here. This might go off the canvas, but that's okay. Uh, I'm okay with that. Okay with this. Uh, so very loosely sketched in. And you know, it becomes challenging for students to get the right angle of let's say like this top plane. And then this the angle of this line here that belongs to the to this you know side plane. And let me demonstrate how what helps you know how didn't help i'm gonna flip over the camera here and it the camera has slightly a different angle than i do so what i what i like to do i like it i like to extend my arm and then tilt it you know tilt it until i'm matching the uh the angle like what i'm doing now i'm tilting the brush until i, I match the angle of the of the line that is formed between, you know, the top plane, the top plane and the side plane. Uh, and, and my arm is extended uh, fully and I bring it over. See, 
and I see that I need to I need to make an improvement here. Let me do this again. See, like I extend my arm and then I tilt it. You might not see me tilt it on the camera because it, it's slightly lower than my 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 eyesight here. And then I bring it over and I can make this correction. I had it look too much up. And then I can do the same thing for this line here. So I you can also do it like this so that you can and then I just bring it over and, and I'm pretty happy with this I have to keep my arm very stiff now for the for this line here I extend my arm I tilt it and bring it over and I'm pretty happy with this here And the same thing for this bottom one, you know, I, I extend it and then I tilt it over to match that angle and I bring it over. I'm, I'm closing one eye. This looks pretty, pretty good here. Now, I'm going to check this one, you know, this right here, this, these angles. Uh, getting some more paint. This is almost, this one is almost horizontal. This, you know, this right here. So I extend my hand, my arm, I tilt it to I match the angle, to I match this angle, but over there on the still life, and I bring it over. And it, it's pretty good. I mean, I think I, overall it's pretty good. Now, I'll see about this one. It, And it's parallel to the one that is closer to me, so I wanna just bring it over. See, I've got paint here, so I, I just gotta move it a little bit. And the same thing for this bottom one. Get more paint over here. Extend my arm, tilt it, bring it over. This is pretty good. I like how it, it lines up pretty well. So that's that's uh, how you wanna approach those uh, simple shapes that can give you a, a hard time. And okay, overall, uh, I like how this is looking. Uh, so now I'm gonna get my my rag. I'm gonna get my rag, and uh, I'm gonna start wiping here. Uh, see this, the top plane has. Uh, a lot of light then this one as well has a lot of light and you want to start to think of a uh, light mass I mean that's the light mass and shadow mass like here I'm wiping away the light mass I'm gonna go back and make corrections here light this and this is within the light mass. And this is shadow mass. So you, you wanna think about those two things, light mass, shadow mass, in helping you uh, start your paintings. And then there's also the light hitting the uh, this table so I'm wiping out all the light at this stage I'm for I am uh, editing the light into into just one value and also the shadows are one are gonna be one value. I'm I'm trying to simplify this, you know. Uh, break it up into breaking up the image into its uh, more simple uh, components. Uh, you might want to say. I don't know if that's the correct term. The into its more manageable uh, stages. 
the light this is the light mass of the of the pyramid uh, if you were if this was a normal situation where you're in my in the studio here at the university of course I would set this up for you this kind of still life and you would walk in here and you would start painting but because of the online teaching you're gonna have to set up this still life in your own home uh, you can use some shoe boxes uh, you can buy boxes uh, at a, at a one of the local, you know, uh, art stores. That's where I got this one. And uh, but you're gonna have to sit. You have to. You have to uh, arrange your still life there in your in your living space. But see here, very quickly, I've addressed all the areas of uh, this painting. You know, wiping out the light, hitting the drapery there in the back. Uh, we're going to paint this in uh, grisaille, you know, just values of gray. But that'll be another another video. Now, just trying to make it as precise as I can. But you want to take this further. You want to make it as as detailed as possible. Uh, we would spend one class just doing this, you know, this uh, stage. See here, like I'm taking my stiff uh, brush and, you know, carving it out, carving out the, the drawing. Uh, so maybe set aside like two or three hours to do this stage of your painting. Get the drawing as precise uh, within the ROM. We're trying and relate uh, all the values as as uh, correctly as you can. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, like at this stage, you know, the this value is very similar to this value, but this is a red pyramid and this is a white box so I can really push the white on this and so you have to start to distinguish uh, the correct value for that goes along with a certain color so there now like I said I, I can wipe out a lot of this because this is the whitest area, the brightest white. Even though it's very bright white, it is not gonna be a pure white when I start painting. Uh, when I start adding the the grisaille, see, I, I can I can keep wiping. Almost down to the white of the of the linen, of the canvas. See now it's, it's really uh, popping out here, this white value. And when the brush gets dirty, I wipe it off here on my, on my rag. And I'll show you, uh, I mean, how detailed you can do this. You can, I have a, a portrait study of a, of a Rembrandt that I did many years ago. 
and it's a very it's a very detailed uh, study uh, master copy so this this is a technique that was used a lot by those painters the Renaissance Baroque period uh, so you're painting but it's still essentially a drawing now I can I can speed this up by moving on to a to a bigger brush So this is the this is the technique, you know, you wipe. There's more white here on the on the cloth that's on on the tabletop. So this is the this is the technique. This is what I'm planning on doing here uh, is uh, just showing you a little bit more of this technique like this and then stopping this video and making a time lapse of uh, of this painting but see you wipe out with paint thinner and your brush you can also use your rag to wipe out And see here in the studio, the lights go off every 20 minutes if they don't sense any, any movement. Uh, I kind of like this lighting better. There's more contrast. Uh, for this to work, when you set up, make sure you only have one light source. Otherwise, you will have many different shadows. Here, I only have one shadow. There's, Every light source that you have in, in your living space will create a shadow. And so it's better to control your, your lights. So I'm wiping out wiping out paint this I feel this paint could be a little a little thicker I'm gonna try and make this a little wider here uh, but this is the technique essentially wiping and adding adding uh, adding more paint I'm adding more more uh, raw umber Sometimes students just, instead of drawing with the raw umber, they they just erase the outline of, of the uh, of the objects. But that's that's not how this is supposed to work. Are you trying to bring out this plane here? And it's so easy to erase and redraw because everything is wet. And I've, you know, I've chosen this way of, of approaching. This is an indirect way of painting. Uh, uh, painting can be very intimidating. So that's that's why I like to do this because right now you just have romber and paint thinner to worry about. You don't have a bunch of paint out on your on your palette. Uh, so I'm. Kind of trying to ease you guys into the into the painting process. So I'm, I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, but this is the stage. This is how you work this, and and, and uh, 
you can go back in and, and darken some areas like I'm doing here and uh, you can darken the background certain area where there's shadow you can wipe off you can add more more burnt more raw umber to darken and to make it as precise as you can all right so it, it is allowed to add more paint it's not just about wiping uh, so I'm gonna stop the video now and and when I do the editing of the video I'll put I'll try and put the time lapse together with this so I will start again in a little bit but I'm gonna stop it right now